Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Hayyemi Nedarim Samach Beis. We are holding right on top of the Amad Tana we have learned in a price. Back to the figs. Huk Pulu Roiv Ha Maktsoyos. Maktsoyos are these knives, these pocket knives, if you will, used to clip off the stems from those figs which are slated for drying and pressing, etc. So putting away of those knives denotes end of season. If most people have already stored away their tools, which indicates end of fig harvesting season, so whatever is left in the field is is abandoned. It's hefker, mutores, mishum, gezel. One is allowed to approach those figs and take them. The Ran says, Shemesiyashin hein. It's hefker. So once most people have done their uh, their fig harvest, even if some people are still involved, but the assumption is that whatever is left out here is hefker, unless unless uh, the owner would state otherwise. But presumably, whatever is left out here is hefker. Mutores mishum gezel pturois mina masrois, and there is no chiv to separate Truma and Maser from Hefker. Why? Perhaps, let's take a look at the Ran again. So let's start from the top. Motores Mishum Gezel. So if most of the uh, farmers have completed their figging uh, harvest, we assume whatever is left out here is Hefker. Shemesiyashim, Hein Mashin Shabasada. Whatever is left out here is is abandoned. Acha Shekiplu V'ichnisu Reva Maktsoyitz. Once most of the tools are taken in, it denotes end of season. You're free to take whatever's left out here. Why is it? Indeed, that Hefker is exempt from Maser. So Ran will bring a Pasuk, which, ba- which is based on a Yerushalmi in the beginning of Meseches Maseris. Hashem tells us, allow the Levi, here Levi means the Kayin and the Levi, to take their portion, their truma, their master. You know why? He has no portion in Eretz Yisrael otherwise. Everybody got a chilek in Eretz Yisrael. He doesn't have his chilek. What is his portion? Your portion. You are enti- you're obligated to give him a chilek of your crop. That is his nachla from Hashem. So that applies typically when it's something that belongs to you. You're a farmer. You have a crop. You separate a portion, give it to the Kain or Levi. That's his. You also have as opposed to something which is Hefkar. Which isn't uniquely yours. Everybody can take it. So there, he has no priority. There's no Chiv to give him through man master. You also have Kar. She is the Chelek Vnach Limach. Kain or Levi has equal access to Hefkar like anybody else. And therefore, he has no priority. And he does not get Truma and Maser from Hefker. That's the reason why Hefker is Pate from Maser. Here as well, these figs are abandoned. Hefker, no issue of Gezel, no Truma or Maser as well. Continues the Gemara on the second line from the top. This is a story involving Rabbi and Rabbi Yesi, Rabbi Yehuda. Iklu, they encountered, they visited this farm, this field. Iklu, Lahu, Asher, they came to this place. It was already, you know, post season. And they noticed some figs lying around. Rebbe have a kachel. Rebbe partook in those figs. Rabbi Yesi, Rabbi Yudaloy Achli refused to eat those fig remnants. What happened? Suddenly the owner shows up. Asa Marehain, the owner of those figs. The farmer shows up. Omar Lahu, he asks them, Why are you sitting idle? Don't you know it's end of season? It's free to take. Amayli Achli Rabbanu, why aren't you eating? Apparently Rebbe had finished his meal. So he was sitting there and he's wondering why they're not taking figs. Huk pulu roiv so it's already post-season. The tools, the knives are put away, it's it's done, it's hefka. Va'afal 
despite the fact that the owner consented or apparently consented to them taking, he didn't want to take. He continued his uh, adamant refusal to partake in the other person's figs. Why? Because somehow he figured, although owner seemed to go along with it, he was concerned that he was just saying it in spite. Mishum Sanyus Milsa, who Amar. It was just a, a fellow who was expressing his meanness of heart. He was just being cynical and and um, he didn't really mean it. Mishum Sanyus Milsa, who Amar, Hadin Kafir. This fellow was just you know expressing his his sarcasm. Why don't you go take my figs? He didn't really mean it. Now, all of the halacha dictates that Rebbe was right. And perhaps that's why Rebbe was doing it, to show everybody that it's mutter, but Rabbi Yisab Rehuda was being noyeg midas chasidus lefnim ashur sadin. You know, perhaps this fellow was not really miyayish, perhaps he can't rely on the roiv farmers who put away their... So he was being machmer midas chasidus and refused to eat the dates, the, the figs. There's another story with Rabbi Chama Bar Bechanina. Ikla Lo Asher came to this place. Bizman Shehuk Blu Rebbe Muktzoyitz. It was post season. Have a He was eating those figs, which are hefker. And then Yoiv Lishami, he offered it to his uh, attendant, who refused to eat Lo Yachel. Amar Lei. So the Rebbe told us Talmud, why are you being more firm than me? Kach Amar Li Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Yisi. I have a quote from Rabbi Shmuel. In the name of his father, Mishim Aviv, his father Rabbi Yisi, who said that it's mutter. Huk pul reva maktzayis, mutaris Mishim Gezel, upturis min amasris. In fact, post-season figs are totally mutter. It's not stealing, it's hefka. Here comes another story. Rabbi Tarfan. Helger Tana Rabbi Tarfan, Ashkriya Ugavra. So Rabbi Tarfan was picking some figs, you know, hefka figs, post-season figs. The owner of the orchard shows up. Ashkari Gavra, the owner, finds him picking his figs. Bizman Shehuk Pulur HaMakitsoyis. After the tools were stored away, post-season, the Ka'achal, he notices Rav Tarfan eating his figs. That enraged him, got very mad. He took Rav Tarfan, Achse Bisaka, he tucked him into a sack, the Shakli, and he lifted him, and he's carrying him, to the river, to throw him to the river. You're a thief. Allah is that a, a thief who's tunneling into a, uh, breaking into a property to steal, you'll have to kill him in self-defense, knowing that this fellow, this thief, might actually resort to killing the owner if he resists to giving him his, uh, his possession. So there's Allah of Baba Machteras, this guy figured, okay, Rabbi Tarfin is the Ganav, I'm going to kill him. Omar, so as he's carrying Rabbi Tarfin in the sack, he overhears Rabbi Tarfin saying, Oyle le Tarfin, woe, woe to Tarfin, referring to himself. Tarfin is a lot of Taraf, Taraf, getting killed. Wow, woe to my, my mazel and my name, which indicates I'm in trouble. Shazer Hergud, this fellow is killing me. Some of Farshim say he was concerned that this fellow is going to get punished for killing him, which isn't really good for Tafin himself to be the catalyst for somebody else's punishment, as the Gemara and Shabbos tells us. In any case, this fellow overhears a voice, Reb Tafin's voice, who apparently he recognized. He didn't recognize him by face. Perhaps it was dark or whatever. They didn't have pictures in those days. But his, his voice he understood. He identified Reb Tafin in the sack. Shama Hogavar. Shavke, so he quickly dropped him, Barak, and he took off and he ran away. Now Rutafim was saved. Omar Rabbi Avo, listen to this. Omar Rabbi Avo, Mishum Rabbi Chanina Ben Gamliel. You would think Rutafim felt justified. And the fact that he identified himself as Rabbi Tarfin, which encouraged this fellow to abandon him. He felt very guilty. In fact, called Yom of Shalit Tzaddik throughout the entire rest of his life. Hayyumit Star al Davarza, a tzaddik Rab Tarfan was distressed about this fact that he used Torah to protect himself. Omar he said, Oily, woe to me, Shinishtamashti, because there's a Torah. I used the crown of Torah to fend off my attacker, to protect myself from a, 
a claim which this fellow considered a justified claim. And I used Torah to protect myself. Woe to me. I misused the Torah. A person who misuses Torah, he gets uprooted from the world. We learn this by way of Kavachaymer. Baal Shetza, the king, who decided to make use of the Kalim that they got from the Beis Hamikdash. Look what happened to him. He got killed that very night. He used the vessels of Beis Hamikdash, which already really have turned into mundane kalim. How? Shanamar, the Pasuk says, Boba pritzim chidulu, when the pritzim, the attackers, the, the goyim came, and they attacked, and they conquered the Beis Hamidash. These um, uncourtly people, pritzim, they came, and they, they actually nullified vilified and nullified the um, Kedusha of the Caleb. So despite the fact that it's already Choyl, the Torah says so, right? They have the Koyach to make it Choyl because, you know, it was it was conquered by the Goyim, it went into Golas. So halachically, the Kleya Middash were considered non kodesh entry. They have a din of mundane, but still, look what happened to him when he misused them. Kivisha parts him. Not so high, right? We learned that once the the Gaim Kanim were pirates, the Migdash, the Kalim turned into Khil. Still, when Bar Shetzar went ahead and accessed these Kalim for his own personal purposes, to pride himself with these Kalim. He misused the Kalim. He perverted the, the Kalim. Nekam and look what happened to him. He died on the spot. That very night, Katal Bar Shetzar, he got killed. That's clay migdash, which were technically already mundane. Certainly, in my case, hamishtamish bekisur shal Torah. When a person misuses the crown of Torah for his own purposes, shuchai v'kaim loilam, which is eternal, unaffected by any fluctuations of history and event. Allah has come and become certainly. It's a terrible thing to misuse the kisur shal Torah, which chas v'shalom can bring to grave consequences. So he felt very bad that he took advantage of his position, of his, of his title, of his Torah, to protect himself. Now you would think, well, it's Pekuach Nefesh, he was fully justified, then we'll discuss that soon. He had another alternative, he could have used another option, rather than tap into the Koyach Torah to protect himself. Asks the Gemara, firstly, let's try to understand what happened. Why was this fellow so mad? It was post-season, it's Hefker, everybody knows it's Hefker. Even the owner should have known that. For Rebbe Tarifin, given the key achal, when he had those figs, the hook pulu reva maktoy yasava was already post-season. Am I tsari, oh gavra, why did this fellow get on his case? Answers like this. He had, a, he had a long history. He was suffering from break-ins the entire year already. He set up his cameras and he figured, okay, now I got him. It wasn't for now. It was for the whole year. Misham dahu. Because this fellow dahu, havu ganvili. He was victimized by thieves. Havugan really envy who would steal his grapes, kula, shata throughout the entire year. So he was finally waiting in ambush. The Cuban, the Ashkel, Reb Tarifin. Once he noticed Reb Tarifin coming in, he said, Oh, I got him. This is the big robber, Reb Tarifin, can you imagine? Suffer, Heino de Ganman. He figured, Okay, now I got him. Throw him into the river. Ask Sigmar, Well, if it was just a local issue, you know, today's figs. Okay, I understand why Rabbi Tafim felt bad. He could have just, you know, pulled out a five dollar bill and taken care of it on the spot. But Ihachi, this fellow has, has a long standing claim against Rabbi Tafim, thinking he's the, you know, the, uh, the long term thief. I might see her now. She said, then, you know, it's impractical for Rabbi Tafim to go bail himself out, you know, pay this huge ransom for, for the entire year's supply. It wasn't really practical. What do you expect from Rabbi Tafim? What, what else should he have done? Of course, he needed to resort to identifying himself so the fellow lets him go. Am I tear enough? She said, why was Reb distressed over the fact that he used his identity to protect himself? Answer is, Reb Tarfin could have well afforded to pay the fellow off even a large amount. 
and he should have done that better than fend off a claim which this fellow considered a legitimate claim using the Kayach HaTer. He shouldn't have done that. Mishun the Rabbi and Usher got Lahava. Rabbi was very wealthy. Vahava the Faisi Bedam. He should have appeased them with dumb and with money. On the topic of Kesar Torah and our proper attitude when we learn Torah, Tanya, we have a Brisa based on the Pasuk La'avos Hashem Alekech. You're meant to love Hashem. L'shmoye Bekoyli. Uludav Kaboy. We learn from here that our learning should be motivated by Avas Hashem. By our desire to connect to Hashem. Shlo Yaymar Adam, a person should never say to himself, Ekra, I'm going to learn. Sheikh Runi Chacham. So that I, I be labeled a, a, a smart man, a Chacham. Or Eshna, I'll learn a bit deeper. Analyze, learn Mishnais. Sheikh Runi Rebbe, so I'd be, I, I be regarded as a Rebbe. That's not proper Kavana. Or a Shanin, I'll go even deeper. I'll be an expert in Torah. Sheikh Zokin, Veisha be Shiva. So that I be uh, nominated, the, the you know the elder, the Rosh Yeshiva. That's not a good reason to learn Torah. Ella, rather the proper approach is learn out of love, realizing that the Torah Torah is the most intense, powerful, internal association with Hashem. This Saif Hakavod Lavi. Ultimately, the true honor, eternal honor. Spiritual honor will arrive to you, and even physical honor, even Gashmi's honor. But that, that shouldn't be your motivation. Shnevar, the Pasuk says, Firstly, tie it to your fingertips. It should be in, clear in your mind, fluent in your, on your lips, like something you're holding in your fingers. It should be so clear. Internalize the Torah into your heart. And then it says, sure, you're bound to experience the beauty of Torah, in the next world and this world as well, the ways of Torah are pleasant. Those who are involved in Torah will experience all goodness and bracha. But that shouldn't be our motivating factor. That's the goal. And everything is residual and secondary. Likewise, when you learn, when you die, when you do mitzvahs, do it to connect to Hashem. Don't learn Torah to, you know, uh, gain knowledge to spite people. Lekanter to show off. Don't do that. Rather, for the experience itself, enjoy your daf gemara. Enjoy connecting to Hashem. What more do you need? <laughs> I was once in Camp Agud and Rabbi Shlomo Belsky Shlita tells me he's, he's, you know, all I need is a blot gemara and a bench to sleep on. <laughs> That's it. Really, what more, what more do we need? V'dabra b'hem l'shma. Al tase ma Torah is gadol b'hem. Don't use the Torah as a crown of glory to elevate yourself. V'al tasem kardom lies oideboy. Don't use the Torah as a hoe, as a shovel, as a tool, as equipment to dig with, to earn parnas. Learn the Torah to enjoy the Torah, to be close to Hashem. The Kavachimer, and this is learned through that Kavachimer, that one has to be careful to direct his actions to Hashem and not misuse the Torah for other things. Uma Bal Shetza, right? That Raya from Bal Shetza, Shlanesh Tamash, Al Bukli Kodesh, Shanasu Klichoyl, he misused the Klichoyl, which were already turned into Klichoyl, still could happen to him, Nekam and Ailam. When a person misuses Torah, Allah has come and certainly. It's very serious. But, Amar Rava, listen to this. Shari le le inish. Loidui nafshe. If a Tamchachm arrives in town and nobody um, knows who he is, he's allowed to be moidia nafshe. He's allowed to identify himself, publicize who he is. Ba'astra del yadli in a place where they don't know who, uh, who this fellow is. And the Rosh says, This way his words his words will be heard, will have influence, and they won't negate his words, they won't ignore him, they'll respect him accordingly. It's important for the Sebert to have that knowledge that this fellow is Adam Chashem. So if he realizes that he's you know unknown, he should inform some people. So that they regard him appropriately. The Khsiv as the Pasuk says this was one. Aliyah Navi, 
instructs Avadya to uh, you know tell uh, give a message to Achav and uh, he says to um, Elio Novi, I can't do that. You know, you're putting me in a strange position. Achav is going to threaten me. Look, I'm I'm just like you. I'm a Yerusha Please don't jeopardize my life. Don't put me in danger. Elio didn't know who he was. He didn't appreciate it. So, uh, so Avadya felt compelled to notify Elio of his stature, of his position. Question is, if notifying your identity is allowed, so why did Rabbi Tarfan not do so? Elo Kashi, the Rabbi Tarfan, why was Rabbi Tarfan so concerned that he used his identity to protect himself? Apparently that fellow didn't know who he was, so he could have told him. Nothing wrong with that. Answer is, once again, he had a good alternative. The Usher God Lahaya, since he was very wealthy, Vavali Lafaisi Bidam, he should have just appeased him by paying him off and taking care of it like that rather than using his identity and name and Torah to protect himself. Rava had a kasha, Rami, he asked a contradiction. Ksiv, one Pasuk says, you're allowed to do this. So a person can promote himself, so to speak. Ksiv, then the Pasuk says, no. Have others praise you rather than praising yourself. So are you allowed to or not? The answer is, depends where. In a place where they know you, don't praise yourself. A place where they don't know you, then there it's permissible as we explained. It is permissible for a Talmud Chacham to inform the others that he is a Talmud Chacham. No, I, I am a Talmud Chacham. Why is he doing this? So he's in the Bezden waiting for his uh, turn to uh, take care of his Din Torah. And there's a long lineup. His time is precious. So he has that privilege. He can tell the rabbi, he said, look, uh, you, know, uh, I, I, you know, I'm a Talmud Chacham and surely Tigroi Beresha address my fight, my, my Din Torah first. Because that's the right of a Talmud Chacham to be addressed first rather than uh, to be made, you know, to wait. Tachsiv, as the Pasuk says, Ubnei David Kayanim Hayu. Now we know that uh, David and Mel's children were not actually Kayanim, they were not from Shevet Levi. Rather, as the Ran says on the bottom line, Shehayu Chachamim Bayadinim Ki Kayanim. Since they were Chachamim, they were treated in certain respects like Kayanim. Ma Kayan Noitel Boresh, just as a Kayan gets first pick, Av Tamat Chacham Noitel Boresh, the same applies to a Tamat Chach. And by the way, the, the Ran draws a distinction between this halacha. And the whole story with Rabbi Tarfin. Who was distressed about the fact that he utilized the, uh, the, the, the um, covet of Torah to protect himself. And here we see that you can use that. You can say, I'm a Talmud Chacham to get these privileges. So the Ran says the big difference between something which is rightfully his, first in line, best you know, choice of, of whatever. We're going to see soon. You know, he gets his... Uh, discount from taxes, etc. That's something which the Torah was mazaka to the Chacham. Just like the Torah gave the Kihanim and the Levim that Truma. It's rightfully his. So certainly it's fully, fully in his, um, it's fully right for him to go and tell them, look, I'm deserving of this privilege. It's my right. It's my privilege. But the difference by Rav Tarfim was that that owner, that property owner, suspected him of being the long-time Ganav. So in his mind, he was justified in his claim. And Rabbi Tarfin didn't really address that claim. He just says, look, I'm Rabbi Tarfin, uh, drop me, right? Well, the man understood from his words that he was Rabbi Tarfin, right? So the reason why he laid his claim to rest is not because Rabbi Tarfin addressed his claim, not because he satisfied his claim, not at all. So there was an example of using Torah just to fend off a claim which in the claimer's mind is legitimate. That's not appropriate. Because he's sort of using the Torah as a tool. Meshtamash bekisr shatur, therefore he was distressed. But here we're speaking about something which is rightfully his. To get the first shot at the din Torah. To get, you know, uh, exemption from taxes. That's something which the Torah gave the Tamut Chacham. And if you don't know that he's Tamut Chacham, how, how are you going to give it to him? So here has a right, and he has perhaps an obligation to inform them. Continues the Gemara. The Koyin Menolan, in fact, how do we know that a Koyin has these rights? 
We compare the Talmud Chacham to a Kayin. He's a leader. He represents Kal Yisrael. But how do we know that it applies to a Kayin too? The Chesiv Kedash Toi Ki Es Lechem Al Kechol Makrot. A Kayin, due to the fact that he serves in the Beis Hamikdash, he's Hashem's representative. You have to sanctify him. You have to give him covet. The Torah Dvei Rabbi Shmuel. What does the Kedash Toi mean? L'Chol Dover Shevekdusha. Says the Rush on the bottom line. Bechol Dover Shei Roya Gadol Mekudish. You meant to give him extra rights and privileges to highlight his specialty, to highlight his prominence and position, and the fact that he's Kaddish. For example, with Tayach Rishon, the Ran learns on the top line of Tayach Rishon, Bekuris Atayra, Shekara Rishon. He gets the first Aliyah. The Rush learns with Tayach Rishon, Liyos Roish Hamadabram, Bechol Kibutz Am Ledaber Velidrosh Tchila. He's the first speaker at a public gathering, at a public event. He gets the first uh, chance to say or the uh, fire says So when somebody's being mighty others, he's the one given that uh, that privilege. So if you're dividing something with the kain, he gets first pick. Interesting that some of Farsham learn. This halacha, to give the kain priority, isn't necessarily related to mitzvahs, even something which is non-mitzvah. An ordinary meal, you give him first pick, first choice. That's a way to give him special prominence, kavod v'kidashd. Oh, my rava, shari le'letzerim rabban, a young Talmud Chacham, can go ahead and announce, l'meimer, he can tell people, lo yahivna akarga, I'm not obligated to pay taxes. He's exempt from taxes. Even Goyim recognized that. This was when Kairish informed his representatives not to tax the Anshei Knesset Sagdeila. All these different types of taxes. We're not going to exercise our control and impose these taxes on them. What are these terms? The king's portion of your income. What is that? Golgotha, head tax. What is that? Some other sort of uh, income uh, tax, animal income tax. Vamarava, surely the Tzum Rabban, even a Talmud Chacham, can go ahead and do the following. Lememer, he can say to the tax collectors, Avdo de Nurano, you know, I, um, I'm a clergy. I serve the, uh, uh, the priests in the church, the ones who get, you know, the, uh, they make the fires uh, with which they uh, worship their Abu Dezara. I'm involved in that. I... Uh, not, not that I do that with Zerah, but I'm, I'm an avid of those people, meaning I serve them, I'm part of the clergy. And therefore I'm exempt. I have a religious tax exemption. I'm not obligated to pay the taxes. See, they were speaking about a Talmud Chacham was really potter, as we just said, or suppose it's an unjustified tax, which would allow this type of, um, you know, whittling out, as we learned earlier in the Masech. In any case, the Chiddush here is that you can actually, you know, sort of identify with... Uh, with uh, avoid the Zara related services, my time and why? Because everybody knows uh, you're not really being sincere. La Vruchi Arya Mineko Amar. He's just saying it to chase away a lion, to exempt himself from this unjustified tax. And even a Talmud Chacham could do so, there's no issue of Chilul Hashem. Now the Ram points out, according to one shot, uh, only this type of expression would be mutter. A person can't say, Chas you know, I'm a guy, you can all say that. I do, I'm an but here he's using ambiguous um, wording. Abdu the Nura can mean I'm an Ever of Hashem. The Ran says, Libila Shamaim Dixiv Hashem Alikech Eish Oichlahu. Abdu the Nura, I serve fire. Hashem is Eish Oichlahu. So since his Lashon can be interpreted both ways, it isn't necessarily a reference to a Zara, therefore it's Mutter. Rav Ashi, Havali Yahu Abba. Rav Ashi owned uh, a certain forest filled with firewood. Zavne Lebenura. He sold it to the Goyim who actually worshipped their idol with fire. Amalei Ravina Rav Ashi. Ravina asks him, how could you do that? You're placing a stumbling block in front of a blind person. A guy may not do what we desire. And you're giving him tools. You're giving him the means to serve his idol. How can you do that? Amalei says... 
Here it's different. The roiv eitzim la'asaka nitno. Typically, wood is intended for heating, for cooking. So I can assume that it's being used in that manner, maybe to heat up their you know place of worship, but not actually to worship with this fire, with this wood. I can assume so, and therefore I'm not obligated to abstain from doing business with them. Says the mission, Ana Kutzer. A fellow says, uh, no wine for me until harvesting season. What does that mean? You know, the grain harvesting. What is that? Wheat, barley, what is that? Typically, katsur denotes the more important, more chashev type of harvest, which is wheat. Until they start chopping the wheat down, the nether would be active, but not katsur uh, soir. But it's all location dependent. Meaning, suppose he lives in a place where they refer to ketzir soir and barley harvest as katzer. Maybe that's their main, uh, you know, crop. Whatever it is, katzer is katzer soir in this place. And therefore, when he says ala katzer, it refers to the katzer of soir. Furthermore, what else is location dependent? Imhoya bahar bahar. If at the time that he said the nether, he's sitting up in the mountain, whose crops are generally, you know, a bit delayed, they ripen slower than the ones in the valley. So adakatzer means until they harvest up in the mountains. If he's standing in a bika in a valley when he expresses that nether, he's referring to the katzer and the bika. So even if he changed locations later on, he still has to follow his previous location, the place where he made the nether. What if he says, Ad the nether extends until the rains, or he says, until the rains are here. In both cases, it's up until, and not including the rain season. His nether is active until the second component of the rain season. So we'll see later on, tomorrow, uh, rain seasons are called rivia, because they sort of land, and they, um, you know, they, Revits al orets, they're positioned on the ground, or there's another shot. Revia is like he enables growth. So there are three components to the rain season. One is Revia Rishoina, one is Revia Shnia, that's sort of the main rain season, right in the middle of the season, and the Revia Shlish is the residual rains. When he says Atak Sham, it means the main rain, the Revia Shnia, the mid section of that rain season. And the Chedesh here is like this. When it says Adak Shamim, I understand it means until. What about Achiyu? Typically, Achiyu means until I experience the rain season, like we had by Achiyu, Pesach, and all that. Here it's different because ultimately the rains are unpredictable. It's something which is not a set event, it's not Kavuaz Man, and therefore he wouldn't allow himself to just uh, obligate himself to an open ended commitment. So even if he used the words Achiyu Gishamim, he meant up until and not including the rains arriving. Rabban Shimon Gamliel Eimer, you don't even have to wait for the actual rains to come. Until the Zman, which is typically when the Revia comes, that's when the nether expires. What if he says, until the rains are up? Until Nisan is up. Then you know you're out of the rains. Until Pesach is over. That's considered the conclusion. Of the rain season, Tanya, Hanoidur Ada Kaitz, a fellow makes a nether until the Kaitz, which is the fig picking uh, season, and he is in the in the Gadol. Right? He's sitting up in the mountains. Gadol is a mountainous area where uh, you know the, the ripening takes a bit longer than down in the valley. The Yard after which he goes down to the valley. Where he sees the uh, figs are done. So even if the kites has already arrived down in the valley, Usr Kites but Gol has to wait until Kites arrives up in Gol, which was the place of his nether. That's his point of reference. So what do we learn today? Technically speaking, once the uh, fig uh, picking season is up, Reva Maktsoyas are stored away. You know that uh, everything left out there is Hefker. You can take it, there's no Chiv Maser. We find that uh, Rabbi Yisrael was Machmer. 
we find that uh, Reis of Hanina's Shamas was Machmer, and we find this fellow who was really, really overly agitated because he experienced some real, uh, um, you know, victimization throughout the year. He was being robbed nonstop, and finally, when he caught Reb Tarfin, <laughs> his victim, he was about to toss him into the river, and upon discovering who he was, he dropped him and ran for his life. Reb Tarfin was distressed that he could have, um, you know, tried another option before actually resorting to the Kesar Tura to get this fellow off his uh, off his back. However, the Gemara says, um, uh, you know, true, we're supposed to learn the Shem Shemayim with Avas Hashem, but sometimes we can actually, um, you know, identify ourselves in a mock where they don't know who we are in order to earn our rightful privileges, which is left, uh, you know, to get, you know, be first online, etc. Just as a coin has that din, right, to give him extra honor, we told money of Harishan, we had this Chiddush, um, regarding uh, referencing of a desire to exempt oneself from, um, you know, unjustified tax claims. We had the Chiddush of Rav Ashi would sell his forest, uh, relying on the concept of Roiv Eitzim in which case is no concern, or it doesn't have to be concerned, that will be used for Avodah Zarah. We learned that uh, the terms, you know, Katsur and all these things are basically location-based. Typically Katsur is Katsur Chitin, unless we know otherwise. And um, you follow the Mokim where you uh, are actually making the nether. So if you're up in the, in the mountain, you have to wait until the cuts arrives in the mountain. Regarding Gishomim, Tanakama says until the Revia Shni arrives, according to Bishim Gamliel, until the Zman Revia, you don't have to actually wait for the rains who might uh, be delayed in their arrival. In terms of Yipasku Gishomim, the end of the rains, we have Nisan, according to the mayor, and according to Yudha, at Sheyabar Pesach. May you all have much, much Hatzlacha, and may we all experience much Siyat Adishmai.